Good afternoon, everyone. It's time to get back in the Word, just a few months, minutes. And this time, we're going to be studying in Romans, the fourth chapter, King James Version Bible. And I thank God for another opportunity He has given. I thank Him for the blessings we've already seen today. And thank Him that we're still in the land of the living. And we're still clothed and in our right mind. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, this again we come to you to thank you, Lord, for another day, another opportunity to get into your Word. And I thank you for everyone that will be listening to this video. And I pray, O oh Lord, you reach down and bless them beyond their expectations. I pray, O oh Lord, you touch hearts and give us all understanding and help me, Lord, speak the word with understanding and not my lips of clay that they may speak with understanding enough that will lead someone to you and give us all greater desire to follow you. Because, Lord, if we follow you, we are walking in the right way. And these things we ask in the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you, Father. Now I'm going to begin reading verse 16 of Romans chapter 4, verse 16, King James Version Bible. And if you got your Bibles handy, I'd like if you read along with me. But if you don't, you can read along later. In case I mispronounce a word, and sometimes I do. Verse 16, it reads, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. In other words, he was an example for us all to follow. In other words, a father figure for us to follow. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. The quicken is to be made alive. That was dead. May quicken those that had no hope through the new birth by faith and by the grace of the Almighty God when He saved us. And call of those things which be not as though they were. Let's look at these words a few minutes. And call of those things which be not as though they were. All things are made of God, whether we see them or not. And we are also to speak of them as made of God, though we don't see them. Verse 18, who... who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed 
B. Abraham, he believed God enough that he would offer his own son upon the altar for a sacrifice to the Father. And he believed God so much that he sojourned in a land he knew not where he was going. But he was blessed. 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. God can call who he chooses. He can raise up who he chooses. He can bring back the life that was dead. And he can take away those that are alive. It's all in the power and the hands of God. And our faith has a whole lot to do with our Christian walk for Christ. Verse 20, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. He was so sure that he was fully persuaded that God would do what he said. We should be just as persuaded as Abraham was that he staggered not at the promise. We should be strong enough we wouldn't stagger at the commandments of God that he gives us to do and be obedient to. 22, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness because he had that much faith and believed in God and he was fully persuaded he was able also to perform the promise. In other words, let me read this again. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. That was but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he would, was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone. Notice that first part of that verse. Now, it was not written for his sake alone. Now, put this other part with it. That it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed or given, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. He we rose again. We were delivered. We were raised. We were forgiven for our offenses. We were raised from the dead of trespasses and our sins. 
again for our justification that we could be called the child of God and that we could obey Him and follow Him. Now chapter 5 and for a few more verses. Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not man, not some other man, but through our Lord Jesus Christ. If any of us makes it to heaven, we've got to go through the Lord Jesus Christ or we will never get there because He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the open door, and He's the door we must enter in through if we get there. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that our tri that tribulation worketh patience. We cannot joy in tribulations without the Lord living inside of us and inside of our hearts, and us living inside Him in Him. Because we don't have that kind of strength to live for Him and rejoice through the tribulations. Enough even to have patience. But now listen, it goes on a little farther. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, and we were the ungodly that he died for, and he rose again, that we might be justified to save us, and we could be justified to walk with him and follow him and live and reign with him one day in that holy city, that new Jerusalem that John saw coming down. Adorned for her, the bride And we are the groom. And we are going to have to be prepared when we meet him on that day. Or we will be turned away. Verse 7. For security for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You talk about having something to praise God for. If we've been saved by his grace and know we are a child of God, we got so much to praise Him for that we could praise Him every day of our life with every breath we take and still could not praise Him enough for saving us, for making us a fit subject for heaven that we wouldn't have to go to that burning fire, that lake of fire which is hell that was prepared for the devil and his angels and not for mankind. So let's do all we can to follow Jesus 
Let's lay aside the world and its sinful ways and pick up our cross and carry it daily, that cross of self-denial and deny our things of the pleasure of this world and carry that cross that we can reign and live with Him forever. And my friend, it will be worth it all. And there's nothing in this world worth losing our soul over and going to hell for. There ain't nothing out there that's worth it. And there's nothing in this world worth turning back to and missing out on the many great promises God has given to those that love Him. Nine, much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were recounseled to God by the death of His Son, much more being recounseled, we shall be saved by His life. Because he gave his life on the cross that we could and can be saved. Again, we got much to praise him for. And again, I love this great book over the Romans. How he laid it out so plain for us to see and we can understand that we must put God first in our life and follow Him. And above all things, we must be born again in order to walk in this faith He's talking about. In verse 11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, our salvation. When we were saved, we received that atonement. Here the blood was applied to our soul. And that old hard heart that we had within us, that was so hard, it took God to break it, that the Spirit could enter in. Verse 12, Wherefore, by as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Again, it's bring to mind those that think they are perfect, and they have done no wrong, or can't do no wrong. How can this be sin if they've done no wrong? And if they've done wrong, how can it be that there's no sin? The Lord spoke it as it's written. And he meant just exactly what he said. Verse 13. For until the law... Sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed, for there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, as the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is a figure of him that was to come. Even they didn't, hadn't sinned according to they did, during that, that lifetime of the law, during Moses, during Adam, people have sinned since that time. But law, the law told us, tells us today what sin is. It still tells us what to stay away from, what to do and not do. And let's never let no one tell us it's not good to study the law anymore. Because we live under grace. But that law shows us what grace really is. 
and what it means to be saved and to walk in the faith that Abraham had and follow the example that was set before us. If we're going to walk in the gospel and please the Lord and be obedient to Him. So let's take these words of this book of the Romans and apply them to our heart and pray that God will help us to grow stronger in knowledge and understanding. We'll read one more verse. Then I'm going to close for this time. But not as the offense, 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had rebounded unto many. He gave it unto many. As many as will accept Him as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and be born again when that Spirit is drawing us is the many that He was talking about. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to You to thank You for this another opportunity You give us to sit down and get in your word just a few minutes. And I pray, O oh Lord, they brought somebody joy and help them along the way. And I pray, O oh Lord, if it's any grown cold, I pray, O oh Lord, just to bring them back. And if any lost, Lord, I pray you'll save them. And I pray, Lord, you apply this to every heart, every listener. And Lord, I pray today, Lord, for those that are sick and afflicted, in body and in sick and soul. Yes, many times, Lord, the, the Spirit needs to be renewed in our hearts and in our lives. We need all, many of us need to be rededicated. As a matter of fact, I like to rededicate my life every day to the Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, today you'll reach down with your love and mercy and touch those that are struggling to live. And I pray, O oh Lord, you would comfort those as suffering for the loss of a loved one. It's already gone on. But help us all, Lord, to know that we will meet our loved ones one more, once again when we reach King Harbor Shore. And help us, Lord, to know that when we close our eyes in death, that we can awake at your feet, for we can give you praise and glory and honor forevermore. These things we ask in the lovely and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you, Father, for your love and for your mercy.